Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back again. Welcome back, guys. This again was our Patreon drop we did yesterday. Uh, it was a video loaded with surprises that many people may not have known. Oh, it was a fun one, too. Yes, again, exclusives, and you could be a member of the Patreon family for as little as basically $10.80 a year when you pay for a year in advance. It was a good one. It's one that we definitely cannot talk on YouTube about, and it's one that usually gets us in trouble, and, and it did, kind of. But it was it was a good one. People need to know this stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. And so the big news right here is this, and... I'll let you, well, should we let uh, them listen? I hope it doesn't echo too much. I'll cap encapsulate it. So in case you haven't seen this this young lady before, this is J JFK, RFK Jr.'s running mate, who, again, has ties into, well, YT and Google and all the rest of those connections. Uh, coming from a very wealthy place, and many people were very, very disappointed with this choice. Anyway, she says that they are considering dropping out of the race. Yes, that RFK Jr. and their team are considering dropping out of the race and joining forces with 45 to prevent a uh, Harris presidency. So this is an interesting development. Again, it, it can cause some unity and even more division. And everything that we see on this planet is all about uh, creating different groups that are always pitted against each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, they definitely are. I mean, this to me is, you know, it's very important <laughs> that... I could never understand why why she was up to begin with, you know, if it wasn't something uh, for them to just bring in the control structure through RFK. And I mean, did, they were just pretending like, oh, no big deal here. Let's just bring this white elephant into the room and, you know, nobody look kind of kind of like that. It was weird. Yeah, because I mean, are, are they are they it wasn't an admission. OK, we got to bring the tech giants in. So, you know, there's going to be a tech giant person uh, at supposedly, you know, the second highest position in the land, one step away from being the highest position in the land. I think it just boggled everybody's mind. And I don't know anybody that thought it was exciting. Mm -hmm. But that's in the circles we run in, yeah. which is pretty limited. You know, yeah. Rama and Sita both didn't agree. No, no, they didn't like it. Or nor Sassy. Or Sassy. And Sassy, you know, she can be opinionated. So what we have is a greater division going on. Could that be the thing that is looked back and said, oh, okay, that was the key turning point. Does that mean uh, then that J.D. Vance would no longer be on the ticket? Or would J.D. Vance still be number two? Would I mean, because some people are assuming out there this means that RFK Jr. would be number two. And maybe J.D. Vance would be knocked off the ticket because, again, there's not a lot of people that were thrilled with that choice. In fact, it seemed that the vast majority thought it could be a much better choice and really, you know, could have been somebody that got people a little excited. And it really, really didn't for the most part. Or does it mean that RFK Jr. would take some other high position in the cabinet? We'll have to see. You know, it's really interesting watching this political scripture play out. Uh, it's it's a curious one. And that's what it is. It's political scripture. Mm -hmm. And here you have Macron demanding that Elon submit to e EU censorship and content controls over X, or he will be banned in all of Europe. So, of course, Macron, a Rothschild banker, that's what he was. That's what, And, and now he's just a WEF puppet. We know this. Everybody knows this. But the true reality is on both sides, they're controlled by the same draconian system. It's just a matter of which side do you feel sympathetic to? Which side are you going to side on? They want to make it appealing. They want you to take a side. As soon as you take a side, they got gotcha. you. They do. It's, it's the most important thing is to hold, control the belief systems. It's truly the eradication of every aspect of the entire political global system. That's the only way we'll really find any sort of 
um, real peace. And here you have a statement from Putin. If minorities prefer Sharia law, then we advise them to go where those places where that's the state law. Russia doesn't need minorities. Minorities need Russia. And we will not grant them special privileges or try to change our laws to fit their desires, no matter how loud they yell discrimination. So, you know, again, this is part of that division. And many people uh, here in the U.S. would totally agree with that statement. In fact, many people in whatever country they're in would probably agree with that statement, uh, you know, with the majority that's in place in their country. So in a country that has Sharia law, they certainly, the majority, don't want, say, let's pick any group, put that group in there. They don't want that that new group to rule the roost and, and all of a sudden change their ways. You know, it's, it's obvious. We all get kind of set in our ways and we like to have sort of our traditions it's what lends us to feeling like we belong with a certain tradition. I think that <clears throat> the traditions are very important as far as holding things together. You know, they mean something. They touch the heart. And if other people want to come in and blend, that is wonderful and partake in the traditions and add to add to traditions that's another beautiful thing because i think every culture has something really wonderful to offer and i also think the religions of the world i mean if you look there is something nice that they have to offer i think the problem comes in when there's a controlling force that comes in behind that and utilizes it to their benefit that's the sad part to me Yes, and I almost made the cardinal mistake of a cook. I forgot I had something on the stove. And anyway, thank you guys. And it does smell good. Um, but Cindy handled that perfectly. And it made me think of wanting to just touch on something. Even if our traditions are all based on distortions uh, and lies, there's still memories tied to those traditions that mean a lot to us, you know. So as a little kid, I still remember when I was like five or six years old being in the back seat and we're driving home from my aunt's house on Christmas Eve and I saw what probably was just simply a jet in the air with a red light and I remember pointing out and saying, do you think that's Rudolph to my parents? And even though we know Santa Claus is is, is a story, Rudolph, you know, didn't exist, et cetera, et cetera there's still these memories that we have tied to those things. And I, and I remember my cousins and like um, meeting with my cousins when I was a little kid and we'd meet at my aunt's house and, you know, they would always go to midnight mass. And I remember as a kid, you know, wanting to go to midnight mass. Why can't we go and meet them at midnight mass and that, that type of thing? Even though, you know, I look back and I know the history of the church it still was something that we did as a group, as a family, and it kind of tied us together. Mm -hmm. There's so many memories like that within families and childhood and growing up. You know, it's it's that concept where we talk about, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's memories tied to traditions that many people would want to keep and, you know, even tell their children about. So, you know, the desert taught me so much. and But the number one thing the desert taught me is there is beauty in everything. There is absolute beauty in everything. But you do have to look. <laughs> you have to look. And you might have to decipher and decide, okay, can you bring that type of beauty in or not? But we all have that ability to decide and discernment so important. It is. And many people now have <laughs> developed the ab ability to think for themselves and discern when their DR tells them uh, something, well, I'm going to look into it a little bit more. How dare you question me? Hey, how dare you question somebody that has this degree or that degree? Yeah, question everything, everything. Millions of Americans may be getting cancer-causing chemicals in generic cold medicine. Uh, Mucinex has been found to contain some uh, cancer-causing ingredients. The, re the reality is almost everything does. And yet, at the same time, if, if you take the point of view, well, everything's toxic, so 
they're, you know, they're just going to eat off of the uh, McDonald's and Burger King menus. Well, that that's a quick way to a quick grave, as we all know. You know everything from microwaves having the radiation uh, sign stamped into the plates below them. Hello. Uh, cell phones do cause cancer. You know, 5G does cause cancer. They could keep putting their little stickies and wiki notes as much as they want we know they're just covering it up because they want their money they want their profits and they want to maintain a society that's orderly for them you could go right down the line and we could keep uh adding different things in there non-stick cookware um yeah obviously and and that monster bear monsanto just won a uh, lawsuit that, you know, again, they've been sued so many times they spent billions in paying out damages, and yet they're still in existence. They, they shouldn't be in existence. They shouldn't. I mean, they've, they've claimed more lives than, gosh, many wars. Meanwhile, we have a super moon over Moscow, uh, as you see it. Yeah, it's a super moon. August moon always seems kind of special to me. I don't know why. You know, and then uh, October, Halloween. Ooh, the harvest moon. Oh, boy. Harvest. There's that word. Oh, there's that word. In this time, too, um, it's going to be a little tense because Alois uh, Ermiler's prophecy, it seems like everything's in place for that right now. And he did say it all kicks off at the time of harvest. In, in Germany and Poland in that area mmm be very very aware you know this is not the first cycle we did a video today talking about Bigfoot and really um, maybe I didn't clearly state the reason why I'm bringing up Bigfoot and Giants because this was on EE Arts it's because the primary reason I'm bringing them up is because what's happening to us right now happened it happened in the past to them uh, there are stragglers of what we would call Bigfoot Sasquatch, skunk apes, etc. There's several different species, and some are um, capable of shifting their frequencies as far as you know the interdimensional component of it. They can kind of camouflage themselves uh, so we don't see them even when they're there. But they are some of the original people here they were here before us they were here way before us and the system is done to both them bigfoot sasquatch skunk apes and all those gigantic pithecus if we want to talk in the uh fossil record it's done to them what it's doing right now to homo sapiens same things happen for denisovans and neanderthals and many others homo erectus homo habilis you know, Australopithecus, Ramapithecus. We could go on and on with the human family, the hominid family tree with dead ends. Now, some of them, you know, they met very, very abrupt ends. And, and Cindy's been able to remote view that. And I say that as we see this. In Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan is a Stonehenge. It's another Stonehenge. It's underwater right now. And they say it's 5,000 years older than the actual Stonehenge. Now, we just got the knowledge, or they told us, that some of the stones from Stonehenge came from Scotland. How in the heck did they move from, from Scotland all the way down towards the south of England where Stonehenge is? Again, uh, you know, the history is a complete abject lie. It's a lie. It's a fabrication. It's a story. It, and it's even in the root of the word history, his story. It's right there in front of our faces, just like scripture, script. Well, there is this group of people that definitely take this, his story, and, and they use it to their advantage. And it's just not fair. You know, it's like, the, it seems like the, the playing field should be leveled. It should be fair. We all should have equalizers, but we have this little group of people who are controlling and, and, you know, doing things from behind the scenes, and we're not in on it. <laughs> we're, we're just, we're not with the popular kids. We don't get to do it. And I don't think that's fair. I think this world belongs to all of us, and we all need to find a way to share. Yes, uh, ab absolutely. <laughs> As Klaus uh, Rothschild, uh, I mean, Klaus Schwab, yes, or Klaus Schwab Rothschild, mm -hmm. Well, you know, his, his cousin Adolf, and well, anyway, 
he is warning us that an era, an era of shock events is coming ahead of the 2024 election. In other words, you haven't seen anything yet. If you think you've seen something, especially going back to 2019 into the be, you know, beginning period 2020 and rolling on, you haven't seen anything yet. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's warning us because he knows the script. And it's not really a warning. It's, it's also implanting it in our minds. And it's also telling us that there's nothing you can do about it in his mind. You know, Moringa is an amazing uh, plant. And this is really the, the truth, that old saying, let your food be your medicine. And, you know, even the biblical thing, the leaves shall be, you know, your medicine. Uh, herbs shall be your medicine. Major, our major allopathic medical system doesn't cure anything. And, and I think that's a statement you can make with, you know, 100% confidence. It doesn't really cure anything. It, it might alleviate symptoms, but it doesn't get to the root cause. So, you know, again, uh, we have bags of Moringa. We have bags of Moringa. Now, going back to Klaus, and shoot, if I play this, uh, this might get banned because I've done that before with Klaus's, um, but Jimmy did it. So if Jimmy did it, it's probably okay. So let's listen to Klaus. So here... I think the next two days we will look how we imagine, how we decide, how we execute the great narratives, how we define the story of our world for the future. And that he is saying in very, very plain wor words. This is them and their little get-togethers where they decide what the narrative, what the script, what the story is going to be of our future. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And here, this guy is definitely in on helping mom with her driving skills. I think this is so cute. I mean, our, our little fur babies, our fur angels, they can't be any more of a blessing, and you don't get much cuter here. I mean, my God, he's saying, come on, mom, come on, a little bit more, a little bit more, ma, a little bit more. Uh, 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 and, and, okay, you're there. Stop. What a good boy or girl. Oh, she's, he, she's precious. Absolutely. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Please do share these videos, like, share, subscribe. Um, you know, thank you guys. I've seen, I've noticed some of you, uh, jumping back and forth that are Patreons and you're coming over on YouTube and you're supporting us on both spots because you want to help change the world. We thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.